Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Okay, in today's video, we are going to be talking about home decor that no one should own after 30. A little bit dramatic a title, I'm not gonna lie, but if I had said items you might wanna reconsider after 30, you wouldn't have clicked on the video. So, you know, some drama is warranted. You know, what else is new? <laughs> Being a bit dramatic myself. Um, okay, so here's the thing. When you're in your 20s, sometimes you sort of buy items, I think, that are just there to fill space, right? Like, you're there, you're still figuring out your style, maybe you don't have a lot of money, and you just sort of like fill in the kind of gaps that you need in your first place or two. And I think once you get a little bit older in your 30s, you start to prioritize things a little bit differently, maybe a little bit more money. And so this video is just there to kind of take a look around your apartment, you're around your home and think like, you know, maybe I should rethink of some of the stuff that I had in my 20s. And that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. And so if you are younger than 30, by the way, still maybe rethink some of these items in your space because you know what it's kind of like having a good moisturizer and and sunscreen in your 20s you know you might think you can get away with not needing it now but you know you'll thank me later so maybe rethink these items no matter where you are i'm not saying they're bad i'm just saying as you get older and you get a bit more you kind of into your own style and you know yourself a bit more you might want to rethink some of these items and um swap them out that's what i'm saying okay so first up on my list is going to be cheap bedding and like bed in a bag so Again, when you're in your 20s, you tend to just, at least I did, get like the cheapest sheets that you can possibly find. And you know, you tend to hold on to them like a really long time, like that kind of stained comforter that probably should have left the home years ago. Just think of maybe re you know, donate those old sheets, right? I actually found out by the way that apparently animal shelters really, really need linens. So if you have old linens, think about donating them there. They apparently always need them. So anyway, yeah, I would say donate them there and maybe get some new ones because you're in your bed for a third of your life. And I think as you get a little bit older, it's just kind of like you start to really like those creature comforts that you get with some like regular sort of everyday luxuries that you can do. And I just think that's something that you should treat yourself to as you get a little bit older. The bed in a bag just feels very sort of teenage boys room. And you know, if, you, if you're rocking a Spider-Man blanket, even at 20, you should probably rethink it. But if you've still got that Spider-Man blanket, oof, maybe, unless you really love Spider-Man, and even then, maybe just upgrade to a different one that is just not, not that. And you could get like some really beautiful linens that are out there that are really gorgeous. And uh, I would consider that being an everyday luxury that you may want to consider. So if you're over the age of 30, just sort of take a look at those linens, swap out the ones, and maybe just kind of think of how you can make your bed a little bit more mature and a little bit more sophisticated. I think you will enjoy it a lot more and uh, it'll reflect a little bit more of who you are and sort of where you've arrived in your stage of life. So just, just something to consider. So speaking of upgrading your bed, that brings me to today's sponsor, which is Brooklinen. So Brooklinen is a high-end e-commerce retailer of gorgeous, beautiful luxury bedding. And Brooklinen is having one of the largest sales that they have all year right now to celebrate their birthday, which is going till May 3rd. So if you're watching this live, check it out. If you want to stock up on bedding and bath essentials for 2023, and now is the time to take advantage of the sale, which is where you're gonna get 25% off everything from Brooklyn Inn using the link below. So check it out. So my Brooklyn and sheets are so comfortable. These deluxe sateen sheets are the ultimate bedding upgrade in my opinion. They are a luxurious 480 thread count, which really gives it a slightly sort of luminous finish, which I just love. They have loads of colors to choose from. You can do a whole bunch of different combinations of beautiful bedding that you can customize your own personal set, which is amazing. So I've got the Luxe Hardcore Sheet Bundle, which includes a corset. It comes with some extra pillowcases and a duvet cover. I got it in the color cream and they are so, so soft and comfortable. It's never been a better time to stock up and upgrade to get your beautiful, gorgeous, amazing bedding because it is 25% off. Again, click on the link. So thank you, Brooklyn, for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to those other items that you should reconsider after 30. Okay, and then next up on my list is bad DIY projects. We all get it. You saw it on TikTok and you thought it looked like a good idea. And so you experimented and you got out the glue gun and you thought, why not make a coffee table out of coat hangers? That sounds like a great idea. And you know, we had the time and you thought you had the skill and TikTok made it look easy. And so you attempted it and it just didn't work. And sometimes it's okay to admit that you're not good at everything and that maybe someone else is really great at building furniture and that person is not you. I think in your 20s, you know, when budget might be limited, then these DIY projects look really attractive and fun. And then by the time you maybe get to 30, you just might wanna take a look at them and think, maybe I'll leave that to the pros. I think that's a healthy, mature attitude to take. And so I would think that after 30, take a look at those bad DIYs that you still have hanging around and go, 
maybe it's time to move on from those. I'm telling you it is, and so I would just rethink it. So the bad DIYs after 30 are just something you might wanna reconsider and uh, sub out for something good. That's what I'm saying. Okay, next up on my list is just gonna be posters that are not framed. So I think that, although we always love to say in design, and I say this too, and we're always like, yes, everything should have meaning and everything should be wonderful and everything should be like photos of our cherished memories. The truth is sometimes you just wanna fill some space. And I think that, you know, even after 30, going to Society6 or Etsy or whatever and getting some prints for some like movie posters you like or some sort of stuff that just sort of maybe works in your color palette and works in your style a little bit. That's totally fine. But I would say that putting them in a frame is just gonna make it look a lot more polished and a lot more sophisticated, a lot more mature. When you just buy some of these posters and you stick them on the wall with thumbtacks, that's what you did at 18 or 14. And that was maybe good then, but it's just not reading as sophisticated as it could be. Now, you don't have to spend a whole lot of money. That's the good news here. You can still get those posters that you love. Just get some ribbon frames from Ikea and frame them. And then they just look a lot more complete and a lot more polished and put together. And I would really just consider that. So posters that are not framed, I think after 30, when you're trying to create a style that's a little bit more mature, I would leave the posters that are not framed in the past or just reframe them and uh, put some frames on and you're good to go. That's what I would say. Okay, next up, we're gonna say like plastic or just really cheap serving ware. So this can include everything from like your mugs and plates and things, but also your flatware or whatever. If you're still serving your guests with paper plates and plastic knives and forks, not at a picnic setting or like an, like an acceptable setting would be a picnic, uh, it would be like some sort of garden party. Like there's ways that where disposable might make sense. If it's your full-time situation, I would second guess that. I really, really would. If you're doing a cheese platter for friends coming over for a nice evening and you've got it on a paper plate, like the Daisy paper plate or whatever, I would just rethink. I think getting, and this also, by the way, applies to just like really cheap sort of generic stuff that you don't actually really like. I just think that what you eat off of is just such a everyday sort of luxury, kind of like the bedding I was talking about. It's just one of those things you do all the time, you use all the time. And once you make that upgrade, it's something that you enjoy using every single day. And it's an everyday luxury that now that you've arrived into your 30s, that's one of the best parts is that now you sort of, are a little bit more comfortable and set in your style a little bit more. You know who you are. And I think you hopefully, maybe, I don't know, but can start to prioritize things a little bit differently. You know, you're not as interested in some of the stuff you spent money on in your 20s. And now that you're in your 30s, having really good mugs and like flatware, at least for me, is something that's way, way, way more exciting to me uh, post 30 than it probably was when I was like 25, where it was just like, what's the cheapest set that I could get at Ikea? My personal favorite, you all know this, is Fable, which I love, love, love. Everything I get is from Fable. By the way, there having a 30% off sale right now. So if you've seen this live, link is in the description, go check it out. That's their like biggest sale of the year, that and Black Friday. Anyway, but there's lots of places you can get gorgeous, beautiful flatware, ceramics, whatever. And I would just prioritize that. Skip the paper plates, skip the really cheap stuff. It's time to consider the upgrade. Okay, next up is going to be everything Ikea. Now, I love Ikea. You all know I love Ikea. I have an Ikea playlist. I love Ikea so much. Ikea is great, but let's be honest, because they're really affordable and because they make it so easy to put everything together because they've done it for you in that top floor, right? They've done it all for you. They showed you how it all works together. They've made it really easy to just pack everything up and throw everything in the cart and just take it home and put your whole space as Ikea. Now, that makes sense maybe when you're in your early 20s and you're probably renting your first place. I rented well into my 30s actually, but like we were probably renting, which means you don't know how long you're gonna be at a place. Budget could be tight. You know, you're still figuring stuff out. And so Ikea can be really great for that. And I love Ikea. There's lots of sophisticated, awesome, wonderful, beautiful picks that no matter what age you're at, you can still love Ikea. But when everything's Ikea, and y'all know what I'm talking about, it doesn't read as mature and sophisticated and curated. And it doesn't really reflect who you are. It reflects what the Ikea designers put in their showroom. So Ikea is great. Some Ikea pieces are awesome, but I think mixing them in with other pieces that you get at other retailers is a really, really good idea. And it's a little bit more of a mature, nuanced, 
design for your space than it is just kind of wholesale picking everything from Ikea. So I think that uh, consider mixing in that Ikea that you maybe still have hanging around. Don't, you don't have to get rid of everything. But if you're looking around your space and you're like, you know, pretty much everything in here is Ikea, that might be fine when you're 22 and you're just like, okay, well, whatever. But you know, when you're in your 30s and you're like, I really wanna create a beautiful stylish home that really reflects who I am and my personal style and all those wonderful things, not sure you're gonna get all of it from Ikea. So maybe just kind of rethink and start mixing in some pieces from other places. Okay, next up is multicolored strip lighting. So if you are a 14 year old Minecraft playing Twitch streamer, get your multi get the multicolored lighting, enjoy yourself, you just have at it. But once you get a little bit older, you'll start to realize that the lighting that is in the multicolored thing feels very teenager and very juvenile, in my opinion. And I think you can stand to upgrade your lighting quite a bit. And I'm not against the strip lighting, it's just that I believe that the strip lighting is at its best when it's diffused or hidden behind some sort of, you know, under cabinetry or behind a valence or something, some sort of way that you get the subtle glow of the strip lighting without necessarily the in your face blinding aspects of the strip lighting. So it's meant to be a subtle glow. It's meant to be subtle. It's meant to uh, functionally, you know, when you walk into a room and it sort of lights up when you walk into the kitchen at night, like that's what it's meant for. It's not meant to be on in your face all the time, like you're a YouTube check channel from 2017, which was a vibe and I get that, but it's just not really there anymore. I think as you get a little bit older and more mature. Also multicolored. I will say that I think that the strip lighting is at its best when it is at a color temperature that matches the rest of the lighting in your space and not uh, a rainbow uh, because it's just a lot of colors that are happening there and there is no color palette that is that is ever going to really intentionally be worked into successfully. So I would stick to like a nice warm white and not blinking and not strobing and diffused. Then it's sophisticated and luxurious and gorgeous and beautiful, but if it's multicolored, then, you know, enjoy your Minecraft is what I'm saying. Okay, next up is a futon. A futon is not good at being a couch or a bed, which is, it's not the best of both worlds. It's the worst of both worlds. A futon makes sense when you have a really, really, really small space and you need it to do double duty and they're usually cheap. And so that's usually tick, 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 the requirements that you need for a college dorm. But as you get older, I think, I mean, if you have the luxury of a dedicated guest room, good on you. Like a lot of us are living in urban spaces like me and we just, I don't have the space to have a complete room dedicated to a complete like guest room for the three times a year that someone would ever actually stay over at my home. So if you have that, good for you. If you don't, then there are other options. Like I would say a pullout couch option or of course a Murphy bed, but they're usually really expensive, but those can be better options, I think, to provide that temporary accommodation for people. But a futon never looks good and it's bad at being both things. So listen, like when you're 20 and your friends are 20 and your backs are 20, then maybe a futon is fine. But when you get a little bit older, then I would rethink the futon. Like if I go to someone's house and I have a few drinks, maybe more than I thought, and they were like, hey, you can crash on my futon. Like, no, ma'am. <laughs> the, the Uber is five minutes away. I'll, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna head home. Thank you very much. Just because I just don't want to stay on a futon. And I think a lot of people as they get older, you know, don't really want to do that. If you have a futon after 30, then, you know, tell your chiropractor I said hi. That's what I'm saying. Okay, that's it for me for today, you guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Not to take this one too seriously. If you are over the age of 30 and you love these things, of course, keep them in. But maybe just, you know, sober second thought. Take a look at some of those items and maybe swap them out. And uh, let me know how that goes. I will see you all in the next video. Thanks, bye.